Hi everyone, if you're new here, I'm Alan with Earth Glow, and this channel is all about sharing the joy of candle making. So in today's video, I'm really excited because I'm gonna be taking you all along with me as I tested out Makesy's uh, best-selling waxes. And I actually unboxed those, I believe in my wax haul um, back in December. So it's now April when I'm filming this, but I tested out the waxes over the course of several months um, between December and now. And uh, I'm gonna be taking you all with me as I do that. So if this is something that you're interested in, then I hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep on watching. First on our list is the famous Cocoa Apricot Creme. It just has a super buttery, soft texture. I'm gonna use the Cashmere Plum 10% uh, for all of these ones. This is the Deluxe Satin Soy, and this one was slightly harder in texture. Still buttery, but a little bit more like a soy wax, and you know, not quite as buttery as the coconut uh, predominant blends. And same process with this one here. Adding in my Cashmere Plum. And I used uh, about a 30 second stir on these. All the recommendations are on Makesy's website as well. They're very easy waxes to use. Just pouring that one in with the 0.02 series. And last but not least, this is our virgin coconut soy. And this one was so, so buttery. It was just incredible. And just for my sort of control, I used my regular wax blend. I just decided I'd make a fresh candle with my beeswax soy cocoa creme blend, which I'll have linked in the description box of the video on how I make candles with that one that I formulated. And then these are all of our test candles here. And then our control on the far right. So the virgin coconut, and then middle is the deluxe satin soy. We've got the cocoa apricot, and then our beeswax soy cocoa cream on the far right. So this is just after lighting the virgin coconut soy candle. And this is with the smaller wick. You can see it's just like pure soot. Wow. So yeah, I used the wick that they recommended, but I went one size um, on the smaller end. So there's absolutely no wind. This is a closed window bedroom and there's no fan. There's not heat anywhere around here. I don't even think I'm gonna be able to carry out the test on this one. The flame right now, I just lit this. Um, it's more than three inches. And this candle has been curing for four days um, and they recommend at least 72 hours. So I'm gonna probably end up blowing this one out. So I'm just lighting this next one. This is the Deluxe Satin Soy. And just so you guys can see, um, the wick is about um, an eighth to, I'd say it's about an eighth of an inch there. Just so you all can see right from when I let this, what it does. I'm gonna try to record them like this as well. And this one so far is behaving much better than the virgin coconut soy. Just so you all can see, this candle will definitely have moments where the flame goes up um, a little bit higher than I would like, um, like that. So it's been a little over an hour on the first burn of the Makesy Deluxe Satin Soy, and this one looks pretty good right now, but the flame definitely does get higher than I would like. The scent throw is really nice. Um, it's definitely filled my bedroom. Um, again, windows are shut, door is shut, so when I walk in here I can get a really good whiff. But just so you can see, that is what I don't like um, about it. The other thing to note is that it has already reached a full melt pool, and this is on the very first burn, which is fine, but it's only been an hour and 15 minutes. And if you can see that wax around the edges is definitely pretty pretty close to being melted, if not already. So that indicates to me that this candle is gonna get too hot as it burns down more. All right, so I'm gonna light the cocoa apricot creme candle. 
and it's night, so I apologize for the lighting not being the best. But like all the other ones, this was the size wick that Macy recommended, except it's a little bit smaller. Um, I wicked usually on the, um, I don't want to say down a size, but on the lower end of their recommendations. So this is only the 0.5 inch. And so far it is looking beautiful. I hope that this one gives me a win. It looks beautiful. This is the 0.02 series. The Cocoa Apricot Creme, what many of you call the luxury wax. So keep you all posted on this one. So we are about an hour and a half into the first burn with the Cocoa Apricot Cream. And we are not at a full melt pool yet. Sorry, this is on my phone here at night. But um, this one is so far is doing the best of the three waxes. The flame does do that. Um, it's not black smoke coming out of it, but it does do a little bit of smoking um, with like non-black smoke. Um, and that, when it gets high like that, I don't really like, but what I would do is maybe just add a touch of mica to this one. Um, but overall, this one is performing the best of the three. All right, so we are about two hours and 15 minutes into the first burn on the Cocoa Apricot Cream. Again, it's night, so I apologize for the lighting, but um, not as happy with how this one's going. Um, again, like, it's not as bad as the others, but the flame is getting too high. And um, what I would probably do, and what I'm gonna try on my next burn, is just adding a little bit of mica, see if that helps um, before I burn, just to kind of suppress some of this craziness. And what I had to mention as well that this one has reached a full melt pool um, at about the two hour mark, which is not uncommon for wooden wicks. Um, it's not that hot either, but the flame height I definitely don't care for. I wanted to show you all that I did go ahead and try the 0.03 series uh, single ply wick, and you can see this candle is kind of a mess right now because some of the burn bits got into the candle, but um, so far I'm really happy with this wick. So this is the same exact one except it's the single ply. This is a whisper bit wick instead of a crackling, or instead of a, yeah, instead of a crackling wick, but this is the single ply. And I'll keep you all updated. Now I did this unintentionally, but this is the Cocoa Apricot Cream with the 0.03 series single ply wick. And just so you all can see, um, this one actually was smoking quite a bit. Um, it's not right now, but um, I thought that that was really interesting. Um, so what, this is the single ply. But the difference is that, th that this is the 0.03 series. So I'm gonna change this out to a 0.02 series on um, single ply and see if that makes any difference. So this is now the Cocoa Apricot Cream with the crackling single ply in the 0.02 series. I just lit this one up and um, so we'll see how this one does. All right, just so you all can see, uh, I really would not recommend the Cocoa Apricot Cream with a single ply wick. And of course that is not recommended for this wax. I just wanted to show you all. Just an update here on the Virgin Coconut Soy with the 0.03 series uh, single ply whisper wick. Um, this one, again, don't mind the messy jar here, but this one just isn't doing very well. Um, the flame looks all right from the camera, but uh, this one is probably gonna tunnel, so I don't think that single ply wick is really the way to go with this wax. Uh, Mixie doesn't recommend it. All right, so just to kind of follow up here, uh, I have to admit that I was pretty disappointed in all three of the waxes. Um, I'm definitely not done testing, but um, I did test a lot of the recommendations, and as most of you saw, I was dealing with those three inch diameter vessels, so they're kind of in between. Um, Makes you recommended the 0.625 or the 0.5. In all the cases, I went with the 0.5. Um, the crackling boosters and um, it just kind of was a forest fire pretty much on all accounts and I'm not really sure uh, what the deal was there. It could have been uh, possibly the fragrance percentage. It could have been that the oil I used just wasn't compatible, but as you all saw, that is an oil that's normally compatible um, with wooden wicks. It's one that I love using with my own wax blend 
And I also tested that one out in the video too, just to kind of have a control. Um, and I found that the Hot Throw was pretty comparable between my wax blend and the Makesies wax blends, um, the three of their most popular ones. Um, but anyways, yeah, just kind of giving a follow up here and I'd love to know what you all use. Uh, if you do use Makesies waxes, do you um, use them by themselves with the Woodwick? Do you blend like an SP487? I'm just really curious. I'd love to have something that works out with these, but uh, I'm definitely, I'm going to be testing out a lot more waxes and bring you all along with me as I do that. Anyways, I think that's going to be all for this one. If you did enjoy um, watching me uh, create forest fires, basically, uh, don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And um, if you'd like to see more wax hauls, definitely leave me a comment. Um, and more wax testing. I plan to do um, one of the Seda Serica coming up next. I'm really excited to, about that one because I know it is similar to the Makesy Cocoa Apricot Cream. Um, I've got some Cocoa 83. I know I've got the 454 of the Golden Wax and um, some of the Soy Bliss as well as the number three. So really excited for all those. Um, but anyways, I'm sending all of you peace, love, and light, and I'm wishing all of you happy candle making.